Pathmaker 7 YouTube channel here. My name's Ryan. I want to get on here and uh, share uh, another dream that I had several years ago um, after my dad passed. And um, actually, the reason why, or not the reason why, but I thought it was pretty uh, interesting to this dream that I had because I would always dream about my grandfather and not my grandmother. And so my aunt would always say, how come you're always dreaming about Papa, but you don't ever dream about Granny? Which was, you know, her mom. And I was, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, the Lord does what he does. And, you know, I don't know why. I think it was, I thought it was, you know, um, kind of strange too that I did never have dreams about my grandmother after she passed. Not one. I always dreamed about my grandfather. I mean, I was pretty close to him, you know. But, uh, you know, when I was younger and helping, helping him out do projects and things. He was a handyman and, um, you know, contractor by, you know, his career. But, uh, anyway, so this, this dream that I had was pretty, pretty unique because it was on my birthday, right before Thanksgiving. So November 1st, I had this dream. It was in 2015. I remember the day. And, um, so yeah, so it was about, um, um, this dream was as if I had arrived in heaven <clears throat> and this the setting just everything I mean yeah you know, I think it's kind of funny you know the the setting was it you know heaven looks like springtime when everything's blossoming and full of color full of life and, and vibrant and you know I think that that's that could that could be a good um, standard maybe for understanding the time frame of Jesus's return because like I said when you read Song of Solomon I've talked about this before you know it says springtime you know winter is past and springtime is here and come away my love and um, summer is nigh and you know just when you look at summer and the heat being cranked up and you know that's kind of speaks to the tribulation period you know it's going to be you know seven times hotter and you read the book of Revelation and you know you look at chapter uh, was it six and seven where it speaks about, you know, uh, tribulation saints that came out of the, uh, the tribulation period. It talks about them, you know, not being scorched by the sun anymore because it's hot. So, <clears throat> anyways, the time frame could be around springtime. But, you know, I mean, again, heaven looks like spring to me. You know, every time I see it or hear other people's comments about heaven and um, their dreams or maybe their visions or even their out-of-body experiences, whatever, you know, has happened to them. Um, so this this dream I show up and it's in a grass setting and it's like I'm coming in from the side you know of this this layout where I'm looking at the chairs and they're all road you know from I'm kind of towards the back and they're all facing you know to my left as if they're looking you know at an event you know it's going on you know a gathering maybe a wedding setting it's what it kind of looks like with the you know white chairs you know um, and then I look over to this this one road to my right, kind of in front of me, and I and I, I look over, and all of a sudden it's my my grandmother. You know, we called her Granny, and she was sitting on the end of the road, and her, she looked great. I mean, her hair looked great, and um, she wasn't wearing glasses, and yeah, you know, she looked healthy, and she looked like she, you know she was in her late twenties, early thirties. And then I looked to her, to her right, which was my left, and there was this little girl sitting there. And then to her left was a little boy sitting there. And then to their left was, um, I couldn't see their faces. It's like I could only see from their neck down. But here's the interesting thing. They were both wearing the same polo shirt and the same blue jeans. That's the way they looked. So I, automatically I realized that these two individuals were older, they were twins because of what they were wearing. That's how that came across and the understanding that I had. <clears throat> and um, and I knew that they were, you know, my last name. Like they were a lineage of, you know, of my my dad's, you know, family. My my dad's last name. And when I, when I looked at my grandmother, I looked at her and I and I would use my, my dreams. I would I would grab my grandfather. I would. You know whoever I was speaking with and so I did the same thing to my granny I, I grabbed her and I, and I held her hands and I said 
is Jesus coming soon? Is Jesus coming soon? And she got really excited. She was like, yes, yes, with a big smile on her face. And she never really got excited like that. I mean, I never saw that. I mean, maybe my mom and my aunt did growing up, but um, she was super excited. She was thrilled because it, it meant that we were going to be together. And, uh, you know, whatever this event was, I knew that we were going to be there together at this event. And so she was excited. Yes, 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 he is. And um, so I turned from my attention from her to the right of her and this little girl was sitting there and this little boy was sitting there now here's the thing the little girl looked more like one of my sons and the little boy looked more like one of my, my little girls because I have two boys and two girls here on earth and at the time we my wife and I we had miscarried and I, I, I realized you know who they were they were my children that I was seeing and the little girl was wearing this beautiful dress beautiful springtime dress again kind of revealing the time frame to me and because I knew that they were miscarried and I knew that they were mine I, I looked at her and I was like oh my and I, and I kind of got sad for a minute because you know I'm thinking from my earthly perspective and I said did it hurt and she goes, oh no, she goes, Jesus was there. And you know, she, she, her, she was barefooted and she kind of raised her foot towards me as, you know, like, like she was trying to touch me. And so I, I remember just looking at both my children and thought, wow, you know, they were wrapped up in the arms of Jesus and you know, they didn't feel no pain. And, and uh, man, they're here, here sitting next to my grandmother. And then, you know, I, I was looking at these two, you know, these two men that or you know individuals that were sitting next to my kids and I was kind of pondering on that one which I'll get to that in a minute it's kind of the punchline I think and so I, I shifted my transition my focus down away from them and walked away from this event that was in this grass and I looked and beyond the 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 area that they were all sitting in was this the best way to describe it a grass street it had like sidewalks on both sides or like curbs or you know maybe it was just the definition of the street um, but it was grass it wasn't it wasn't you know paved or anything it was just this beautiful grass that was leading like a path you know leading away from and I noticed that there were houses on both sides of this grass street that was you know away from this field and so I began walking down this path and I, and I knew that I had to go down it and so the houses were spread out. You know, I wasn't paying attention to the houses too much, the size or anything. I just knew that there were houses on both sides of the street. And as I walked down this grass street, which by the way is beautiful grass, can't, can't even come close to that which we have here on earth. And I was kind of admiring that because my dad was just like a, a grass freak. You know, he, at one time in one of the houses that he was at, he got his always just sod put in and you know, it was like carpet, you know, and try to keep it that way. So I'm, I'm sure he's enjoying the grass in heaven. Um, however, so I'm walking down this grass street and as I'm walking down it on the left, I look over and there's my dad. And my dad is wearing a polo shirt and jeans like he always would wear or typically would wear. And he's on the, on the back of this house and he's setting up a grill like, you know, for, you know, a cookout. And as soon as he sees me, I start walking into the yard towards him and he goes, oh, good, you're here. He goes, come on, you gotta help me get all these grills set up. We gotta have this, we're gonna have a cookout. We got this big, you know, gathering. He's like, so you gotta, you know, come help me. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he puts his arm around my, you know, my, my neck basically. And we, we walk across the street and go to another house across the street. So, you know, maybe it's our house is close together. I, I, I don't know, or, or somebody else's house and maybe family's houses and you know and and I walked with them and you know to go get more grills and um, after that's when I woke up and you know after all all my dreams you know especially dreams like this you know I always start just talking to the Lord about it and and then it dawned on me I was like you know those two those two men that that I knew were of the Maxwell lineage that's the impression I got. We're wearing the same polo shirts, wearing the same jeans, sitting next to my miscarried kids, next to my grandmother. It dawned on me that my mom, before she had me and my brothers, I'm in the middle, I have an older brother and a younger brother, 
Um, she also had a, uh, we also have, I also have another brother that she had prior to my parents being married that she gave up for adoption, which we wind up meeting 34 years later after he was born, which was a really cool story. That's probably another video for another time. Um, tear jerker at that. Um, but anyways, uh, but me growing up, you know, there was me in the middle, my older brother, my younger brother, and some of my parents were married. My wife, I mean, my wife, my mother miscarried twins. And, you know, they didn't know if they were, you know, female. I mean, I was told that they were, you know, two little girls, or they thought maybe they were possibly two little girls when they miscarried. And so I remember after this dream, I went to my mom and I was like, hey, let me ask you a question. I was like, are you like set in stone? Are you sure that the twins that you miscarried before my older brother that, you know, they were female? She's like, no. And I was like, because I had this dream and, you know, I really do feel like that, you know, the twins that you miscarried were two boys, you know, because of this dream I had. So, yeah, so I mean, I got to share this dream with my, uh, my family and then my aunt showed up and we had Thanksgiving, like she'd come over for Thanksgiving and um, at my grandparents on, on my mom's side, which was the granny that was in the dream was my mom and my aunt's mother. And I thought it was really interesting because I had, or really cool, that I had that dream and I had my granny in it, two of my miscarried kids, which I think we had more than that miscarried. Um, I know three for sure, could be more than that because my wife had different things and some, some troubles with some pregnancies. But then I had what could possibly be my twin brothers, you know, that I saw them. Of course, I didn't see their faces. Um, and I thought, you know, it's kind of funny how God does that, you know, in dreams. Like he just kind of holds these little things back like nuggets and keeps your curiosity going. And, you know, when it comes to heaven and family and, you know, reunion and just, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of neat. And then, you know, I got to see my dad in that, you know, and his, his face that was all lit up because we showed up, I showed up. I was, hey, come get the grill, you know, and help me get all these grills together for this big cookout. You know, and I was just excited to see him. I didn't care about the grills, you know, but just, you know, being able to have a couple dreams where my dad hugged me and this one and being able to see my kids and know that, you know, like God protected them. And then, of course, then seeing my granny and uh, her excitement, you know, her face that was all lit up from you know, seeing me for one and me seeing her. And uh, man, you know, I just, you know, you know, makes you emotional when you start thinking about it because I know that the Lord gives us those dreams to encourage us to keep us focused, you know, on the race ahead. And uh, of course, I just want to share these to encourage the body of Christ as well because I know that we're coming to the end and um, as will turn 73 at the end of next week. I think I might do a video discussing that a little bit too, just kind of some thoughts. Uh, but anyways, uh, I just wanted to share that. Hope it's an encouragement to everybody out there and um, my family, you know, so they can re-listen to my dreams. They've heard my dreams before, you know, but it's, I think it's good to catalog them here on YouTube. That way they can re-listen, re-watch. Um, uh, but also, I also want to get opportunity to uh, those who may have come across this YouTube channel and realize that it's a, a ministry to bring others closer to Christ and also be an encouragement to the body of Christ and just knowing that time's short uh, I want to give you the opportunity to if you don't know the Lord today if you don't know Jesus time's running out Jesus is coming soon and uh, you know just need to have a childlike faith you know just the ABC's you know, J.D. Farag, good channel to go watch, by the way. I've been watching him for years, years and years on YouTube. You know, uh, what a blessing that guy's been. Of course, there's a lot of other channels. I can I can share a lot of other channels, that's for sure. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, just have a faith like a child. ABCs, you know, admit that you're a sinner. Because I'm a sinner. We're all a sinner in need of a Savior. And, and uh, um yeah, just admit that you need a savior and then be, um, you know, if you need to believe on Christ, he took our place on the cross and died for us, died for our sins and he rose from the dead and he lives again and he going to come back and get us. And uh, see, confess in your mouth that he is Lord and um, believe it in your heart.
confess it with your mouth and you know you'll be saved um, anyways I hope this has been an encouraging video you know my dreams are encouraging to me and so hopefully they're encouraging to others um, love y'all and uh, I'll try and put some more videos out just to put some thoughts and of course I've had plenty of dreams so I got I can have you know catalog a lot of my dreams so I'm just gonna keep doing it you know my wife my wife keeps pushing me so uh, all right well, I'll talk to y'all later and love y'all see you soon